Hello and welcome to my presentation about the spinning mule. First, I will contextualize the textile manufacturing in the 18th century in Great Britain. Before the 18th century, the manufacture of cloth was only performed by individual workers, also known as the domestic system. People work from their home. There were two ways to do it manufacturing individual articles from raw materials and then bring them to a central place of business like a marketplace or a large town to be assembled and sold. Second way with a commercial system, the traveling agents or traders who tour the village supplying the raw materials and collecting the finished products. The raw materials were given by merchants. One of the advantages of this system was that workers went at their own pace and children working in the system were treated better than in factories. But the system of individual workers was neither fast nor well regulated. In the mid 18th century, three factors pushed this improvement in textile manufacturing. The production of textile was already organized and this one was the basis for a much more efficient system. Due to American slavery, the cotton production increased and allowed for shipping production. And the last one, the mechanization of the industry through several innovation inventions like cast iron and steam engine. I will rapidly define the definition of spinning. So it is a twisting technique where the fiber is drawn out, twisted and wound into a bobbin. Next I will focus more on the principal subject. So I will make a little presentation about Samuel Cropton. He was an English inventor and pioneer of the spinning industry. He was born in Lancashire in 1753 and died in 1827 when he was still a boy his father died and had to contribute to the family resources by spinning yarn he worked on james Algrevin's spinning journey so he had the idea to improve this machine and work on it for five or six years he earned money by spinning and playing the violin at the Bolton Theatre. Before presenting the spinning mule, I will tell you about two machines. The spinning journey, created by James Alcrevist in 1764. It allowed a group of eight spindles to be operated together. It could be operated by hand but it produced weaker thread and only be used for certain parts of cloth. And the water frame created by Richard Arkwin in 1768, it could go at different speeds and could work continuously, but the multiple rollers required much more energy input and demanded that the device be drained by a water well. Samuel Crupton was inspired by the two spinners to create his own. He convened the two system, the spinning mule. This name was used because it is a hybrid of the two machine and in the same way a mule is the product of crossbreeding a female horse with a male donkey. A female donkey is called a jenny. The mule produced strong and thin yarn and also suitable for any kind of textile. Uh, the first mule could spin 48 at the same time. Now it is between 30 and 1000. So how this machine works? I will uh, show you a little video. It is not the original product of Samuel Cropton, but we can see how it works. The raw yarn rovings are pressed on the creel of the fixed part. They are crushed and uh, stretched by small cylinders and then wound around a spool placed on the moving parts. 
named the carriage. The speed could be changed to obtain a more and less fine and twist thread. The movement of the carriage is given by a worker who operates a well or pushes the carriage. He was unable to patent his invention. He was forced to make his invention public. So his invention was improved by a lot of people in the following years. Like Henry Stones, who improved by adding salt, a gear ring, and metal molars, since it was originally made of wood. Baker worked on drums and the uh, algorithms uh, used parallel scrolling to achieve smoother acceleration and deceleration. In 1790, William Kelly used a new method to assist a draw stock. Wright moved the stock to the center to double the number of spindles. In 1793, John Kennedy improvement to find spinning machinery. In 1818, William Ayton improved the winding of the thread and Richard Roberts designed a self actor mule and he filled two patents in 1895 and 1830. But in 1820, the mule spinning still needed manual assistance. For the last part, I will talk about the social and economic impact of the spinning mule. First, I was one of the key points of the Industrial Revolution. But like one machine took the place of several skilled workers of the cottage industries, a lot of workers was fired and family lost incomes and leaving people destitute and hungry. Several protests and movements took place like the Ludit movement. This movement took place between 1811 and 1816. Unemployed people smashed machinery and set fire to mills and factories. The government responded by the setup of the Frame Breaking Act in 1812. It was a temporary act where the condemnation of this act was punishable. It was removed in 1814. And one of the best things about this machine is the discovery of mule spinners cancer. It was a cancer of the scrotum. The first case was reported in 1887. And it causes 500 deaths among cotton mule spinners and three among wool mule spinners between 1911 and 1938. Research by the British Home Office Committee suggests that the mineral oil used to lubricate the mule speeders was the cause. For example, you can see on the photo showing uh, where the photo bar is in regards to the 12 years old in 1892. So that is the end of my presentation and thank you for listening.